Hello everybody, welcome now to another video in which we uh, will discuss how to prove the fact that, that um, inversions are conformal maps. Um, just to remind you, what it means to be conformal map is to preserve angles between two lines, between a circle and a line, and between two circles. You know that inversions map uh, lines to circles, or to lines depending on how the line is positioned. And uh, similarly, they can map circles to circles or to lines. So there are actually several different cases to consider. However, we're not going to go through all the cases or try to do the most general uh, situation. Um, I'm going to show you how to prove that if you take two lines that intersect at an angle alpha, you're going to get two angles, sorry, you're going to get two circles uh, whose tangent lines intersect at the same angle. Um, you have uh, already seen my abilities, or lack thereof, of drawing circles live on the board. Therefore, I actually uh, prepared this picture beforehand for you. But we're going to go slowly uh, through the various uh, uh, elements of that picture. So, we start here by drawing two lines. The blue one and the red one. So, um, these two lines intersect at a point A and form an angle X. Um, the orange circle <coughs> is the circle of inversion and its center here is the orange C. So the first thing that I do is to try to find the images of both of these lines under the inversion whose circle you can see here. So. Um, I try to, to keep the color codes uh, so that you can actually see what is mapped to what. So first I construct the image of this uh, red line. So how do I do that? It's the same method we always use. So we take the center of the circle of inversion and we draw a ray. Here the dotted purple ray that is perpendicular to the line, to the red line. Okay, you see I mark the perpendicular uh, property here by drawing the, the right angle. They intersect at the point H, and the next thing to do is to find the image of this point H under the inversion. And we do it again the same way, right? We just take, we connect this point with the circle trying to find the tangent line. So that is the tangent line to the circle of inversion. And then we draw a perpendicular, we drop a perpendicular line onto this uh, line that goes through C and H. And where they intersect is the point, point H prime. It's right here. And that point H prime is the image of the point, point H under the inversion. And now I know that the, C, the line segment CH prime is the diameter of the circle that is the image of the red line. So that's the red circle here. That's the image of the red line. Now we do the same thing with the blue line, right? So the blue line is here. We connect the center of the circle of inversion with the blue line. We get the point G. We connect it so that the connecting ray uh, falls perpendicularly onto the blue line. And again, from this point, we draw a line tangent to the circle and then connect this point perpendicularly to this line CG and we obtain the point G prime. And now this line segment CG prime is the diameter of the circle, which is the image of the blue line. So that blue circle here is the image uh, under the inversion of the blue line. Okay, um, so what's the angle of interest here? Um, you see, in fact, I drew the angle X uh, here, but I should draw it right here. It doesn't actually matter because it's, of course, the same angle, but um, just that's how inversions work, right? That, so this is the angle between the two lines, and I see that these two circles that are images of these lines intersect at two points. One of the points is the, the um, center of the inversion. And again, that point doesn't, uh, doesn't concern us because that point 
uh, if we were to apply the inverse of that inversion to this point, we would get a point at infinity. So um, that's not the point corresponding to the intersection of the lines. Um, the other point of intersection of these circles is the one that concerns us. So that's the point A prime. So um, A prime is the image of A under the inversion. And now I draw tangent lines to the blue circle and the red circle at the point A, point A, A prime. That's the blue line is the uh, line that's tangent to the blue circle at point A prime. And the red line is the line that's tangent to the red circle at the point A prime. Okay, and these two now form an angle that's uh, this angle Y. And our goal, goal is to show that the angle x equals the angle y. Okay, so um, the proof actually consists of several um, observations. So the first observation uh, is the following. That's that the angle B a prime k is right. So what's k? Well, k is just a point that I marked on this line here on the tangent line. Uh, similarly, I marked the point. I marked the point L on the tangent line on the on the blue line. So the the angle B A prime k. Uh, oh, maybe I should also say what B and D are. So B. is the center of the red circle and D is the center of the blue circle. So uh, the angle B A prime K, that's the angle that goes from uh, the center of the red circle to the point of tangency of the line of the tangent line and then to k but you know already that any tangent line to a circle forms right angle with the radius and of course the line segment from the center of the red circle to its circumference here to a prime is the radius so therefore this b uh, a prime k is the right angle and similarly, we can use uh, um, the same property looking at the blue circle. Now the radius is d a prime, so and the line going through l and a prime is the tangent line. So d a prime l is also right. Okay, now I draw a, I mark the angle between the tangent blue line and the radius of the red circle by gamma, right? Note the tangent line is to the blue circle, but the radius is of the red circle. So the, it's the angle between the radius of the red circle and the, the blue line here, the tangent line to the blue circle LA prime and I mark it by gamma. Okay, and so the second observation is the following, that if I take gamma plus y, I get also 90 degrees, right? You see, gamma plus y is just this whole angle here, it's essentially b a prime k, so from the first part, I get that this is 90 degrees. But shifting this sort of a little bit, uh, shifting the attention a little bit here, um, we see that um, if I look at the uh, angle B A prime D, so this angle here, and add the angle gamma to it, I also get the right angle, right? because that gives me the angle d a prime l. 
So this angle over here, D, B A prime D plus gamma is again 90 degrees, but because that's D, uh, that's D A prime L. So that tells me that, so I have that this 90 degrees is also the angle D A prime B plus gamma. And as a conclusion from this uh, observation, when you compare the two sides, you see that you can cancel gamma, and so you get that the angle we're looking for is equal to the angle D A prime B. So in other words, this thing here, D A prime B, that's also Y. Okay, the next observation is the following. So three, that would be that the angle D A prime B is actually equal to the angle B C D. Where is the angle B C D? Well, that's this one here between the two dotted purple lines. Why are these two uh, angles the same? Well, we just analyze them sort of piece by piece. You see the angle here, which I now denoted by Y, that's the BA prime D, consists of two angles. You can look at the angle CA prime B, that's this bit here, and then the angle DA prime C, that's that bit here. So it's the sum of these two angles. However, so if you just consider this triangle CA prime B, you see that triangle is isosceles because this is the radius. Remember, B is the center, and this is also the radius of the red circle. So this line segment and that line segment are the same. So the triangle CA prime B is isosceles. So this is, let me just put here as an explanation, since the triangle CBA prime but also the bottom triangle is isosceles, right? Now we we'll look at the, uh, the blue circle. So this is the radius of the blue circle, and so is this. So, and the triangle CDA prime are isosceles. So this tells me that these two little angles, how about I write them like this, correspond to this angle and that angle, and they are the same. So that means the angle Y is equal to the angle uh, BCD. All right, and finally, so this tells me, right, that this, that this thing here, that this angle is Y. Now I know that this angle is also Y. Um, so now the next thing is that the angle B C A prime, that's the, that's the top red uh, mark here, is equal to pi halves minus uh, the angle delta. Where is the angle delta? Uh, that's this angle here. Indeed, look at the right triangle CHA. The triangle CHA has angles, well, that little one here, that's the BCA prime, angle delta, and that angle which is right. So it means these two angles have to add up to, to 90. So the angle BCA prime plus the angle delta must give you 90 degrees. Hence, you get that. So let me just say here as an explanation, uh, since the triangle ACH is right. Okay, but similarly, we can look at the triangle um, CGA. And that's also a right triangle. So here we have another angle that's called epsilon. 
So the triangle CGA is also right. So that means that this, this angle here that I marked by the two strokes must be equal to 90 degrees minus epsilon. So 5, the angle uh, um, DCA prime must be pi halves minus epsilon. And the reason for that is since the triangle uh, CAG is right. Okay, so from this, so 4 and 5 give us that Y, which is the sum of BCA prime plus DCA prime, right? We already know that this is Y, so that's BCA prime plus DCA prime is equal to, well, this plus that. So that's pi minus delta plus epsilon. Okay, I'm adding the two left-hand sides, so I'm adding the two right-hand sides, so I get pi minus delta plus epsilon. Oh, but delta plus epsilon is what? Well, look, delta plus epsilon plus x is pi halves. Sorry, it's pi. Delta plus epsilon plus x is pi, so this is just x, which is what we wanted to prove. Okay, so at least in this case, we were able to prove that two lines that intersect at an angle x map to two circles whose tangent lines intersect at the same angle.